Welcome to Electron Line, and here's another topic in two-dimensional motion. The topic here deals with what we call vector notation. We are actually able to describe two-dimensional motion or even three-dimensional motion using a vector notation. So here we have a position vector as a function of time is equal to 2t squared in the x-direction plus 5t in the y-direction. So what does that really mean? We'll get into that in just a moment. And then in addition to that, they want you to find the velocity vector at t equals 2 seconds and the acceleration vector at t equals 5 seconds. So, how do we do that? Well, these are vectors that point to where the object is at at any point in time. So let's say we want to know where the object is at at t equals 0. So what we're going to do is find the position vector when t is equal to 0. That's equal to 2 times 0 squared in the x direction plus 5 times 0 in the y direction. So this becomes 0 in the x direction plus 0 in the y direction, which means at t equal to 0, the object is at the origin. It is right here. So the position vector relative to the origin is a 0 vector because you can't point to something that's at the origin. It's right there. OK, now, let's say we want to find out where the object is at at t equals 1 second. Well, that means it's 2 times 1 squared in the x direction plus 5 times 1 in the y direction. So that means this is equal to 2 in the x direction plus 5 in the y direction. That we can find. So 2 in the x direction, well, 1, 2, 2 in the 5 in the y direction, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. So this would be the position vector. Uh, let's call it r sub 1, which means after 1 second, the object is located over there. So now let's go ahead and find out where the, the object is at when t is equal to 2 seconds. So that's equal to 2 times 2 squared in the x direction plus 5 times 2 in the y direction. So this is equal to 4 times 2, which is 8 in the x direction plus 10 in the y direction. So let's go ahead and graph that. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 2, this is 8. This would be 5, and that's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 right there. So that would be right there. And so we can draw this vector right here. And this, let's call this r sub 2, because that would indicate the position of the object at t equals 2 seconds. And that's the position vector. That's where it's located relative to the origin as drawn by that vector. Let's do one more. So now we have the position vector when t is equal to 3 seconds which is equal to 2 times 3 squared in the x direction plus 5 times 3 in the y direction. So that would be uh, 9 times 2, which would be 18 in the x direction plus 15 in the y direction. Let's go ahead and grab that vector. So now we are uh, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that would be 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 right there. So where those two meet right about there. That would be the location of the object right there. That would be r sub 3. And that would be the vector representing the position. So you can kind of feel now or get a feel of what the motion of this object is. Notice that it's going from here after one second to there, to there, to there. So it looks like this is the path that this object is taking. Notice that in the y direction, the motion seems to be constant. Every second, it's another 5 meters farther away than before if this is in meters. But in the x direction, it seems to be accelerating. It seems to be going faster and faster and faster in the x direction. So the difference in distance in the x direction becomes greater and greater and greater from one second to the next. So now that you understand that, hopefully that made sense, let's now go ahead and find the velocity vector um, based upon that um, position vector right here. And of course, you know that the velocity is the derivative of the position. So we can say that v as a function of time is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the position as a uh, function of time, like so. Which means we're going to take this equation and take the derivative of that. So if we take the derivative of this, this is equal to 4 times t in the x direction plus 5 in the y direction. So now this describes the velocity of that object. Notice that the y direction velocity no, no longer depends on time. It's going to be 5 meters per second every second, not changing. So that means there's no acceleration in the, in the uh, y direction. But in the x direction, it does depend on time. The velocity is 4 meters per second after 1 second, 8 meters after 2, 
12 meters after 3 and so forth. So you can see that in the x direction, it is indeed accelerating, which seems to make sense. If you now want to evaluate it, what the velocity is after 2 seconds, you can then say that velocity when t is equal to 2 seconds is equal to 4 times 2 in the x direction plus 5 in the y direction. So this would be 8 uh, in the x direction plus 5 in the y direction. So that would be 8 meters per second in the x direction, 5 meters per second in the y direction. If you want to, of course, the total velocity, you would use the Pythagorean theorem. So you say, well, v total, and if, of course, you want the magnitude of that, not just the direction, then you can say, well, that's equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 5 squared. That would be 64 plus 25, which is uh, 90, well, 89. Uh, let me do that real quick on a calculator. So we have 64 plus 25. Uh, take the square root of that. So it's 9.4 meters per second, if this is indeed in standard units. All right, so that's how you would do that. And if you want to find the acceleration, you can say, OK, the acceleration as a function of time uh, is equal to the derivative with respect to time of the velocity, which is a function of time. Of course, then we would take the derivative of this equation right here, which simply would be 4 in the x direction plus 0 in the y direction, simply 4 in the x direction, which says that the acceleration only exists in the x direction, not in the y direction. It would be 4 meters per second squared in standard units. If we then want to find out what the acceleration is after 5 seconds, notice there's no longer a dependency on time. So you can say that acceleration, when time is equal to 5 seconds, is simply equal to 4 in the x direction, and that's it. And so here you have a good concept of how to do two-dimensional motion, or this can be done in three-dimensional motion, of an object that has position vector as a function of time. So to find velocity and acceleration, you take the first and you take the second derivative, and then you can plug in the values, and you can see how that can be used in that kind of thing. All right, hopefully that helped, and that's how you do that.